Today, we're going to talk about the hardest part about painting watercolor, and that is the idea of creating a large middle value connected shape. And the reason why this shape is important is because it allows your painting to read well from a distance, and it also allows you to take advantage of the best part about watercolor, and that is the blending of colors from one into another. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. I like to think of my painting in three sections. The first one is the first wash. Now, you may have seen a previous video I've done about the first wash. If you haven't, you can go check out that video. This video is gonna build on what I talked about in that video. So in the first wash, we are painting loose, and basically we are going around the painting and applying the lightest value of different colors throughout the entire painting. So now we're in phase two, and that is the connected middle value wash. That's the most challenging part, and that's what we're gonna to cover today. The first thing that you need to do to prepare for this wash is analyze your painting, and you're gonna determine what your large middle shape value is. Now, if you've done a value study, then you might have already figured out what this large shape is gonna be. So once you determine what this shape is gonna be, you can start to pre-mix some of the colors that you're gonna use in this large shape. And I don't mix every color, but I like to mix the first two or three colors that I'm gonna need. The thing that you have to think about is you are up against the drying of your bead. And if you don't know what the bead is, that's just another way of saying the wet edge that you're working from. So pre-mixing these colors is very helpful. It'll set you up for more success as you enter into this challenging part of your painting. I actually like to load up a few different brushes and have them ready to go. Anything I can do to save time during this part of the painting. And it's helpful because I'm right-handed to paint from the left side of the painting and work my way over to the right side of the painting. And I'm changing my color temperature here from warm to cool. And that's easier to do because I have two puddles of color already mixed and I have two brushes loaded up with the colors that I need as well. And so while I'm doing this, I can be referring back to my reference photo and trying to squint and determine the right value of these colors as well. That's another thing that you have to think about when you're painting this middle value wash. There's a lot to think about. So I'm painting this car over here and I want this car to connect with the shape of the building behind it. And I'm letting those colors just merge right into each other. Now the temptation is when you're painting this wash is to pick a color and kind of stick with it. And the more I paint, the more I realize that I need to vary my colors through this process. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now I wanted this light pole to blend in with the shape of this building, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint it in this stage as well. So you can see the face of that truck the shadow areas of that truck are connecting with the building behind it. And what I did here is I wanted a soft edge in the background. So I just re-wet a little bit of the paper along that horizon line. And I'm going to go back in and add some color while that edge is wet. I'm cutting around some small little highlights in the background. And you can see in this point I'm using a small synthetic brush to get some smaller marks. So I have that softness in the background that I was wanting, and now as I get closer into the middle area of the painting, I'm adding more texture into this tree here. And you can see I went fairly dark in this tree, and that's because I want those dark shapes to have soft edges, so I wanted them to merge into the middle values here. Again, I'm cutting into the shadow areas of the cars and the buildings, and letting all of those colors blend together. I can always find more separations in my painting later on. I can add darks, I can scratch out some things if I want, but this is my only chance to get a smooth transition between these shapes. 
and smooth connections between these shapes. So here I'm moving into this building that's over here. These darks in this building and around the, this tree, I want all of them to blend together. And I'm connecting some shadows and other shapes of these cars all into one shape. And before this car dries, I want to add in the shadow and the dark of the wheels underneath the car as well. I went ahead and added in a, another light pole over here. So this is really phase three of the painting. I've already got this large middle value shape, and now I'm adding in some darks. Some more detail to bring the scene together. Little spots of darks on these cars. The darkest areas, the shadow underneath the car, and the wheels. Adding in a little more detail in some of these buildings over here on the left side of the painting. I think one of the hardest parts about doing this is you want this to look finished as you paint it. But you need to realize, again, like I've talked about in other videos, you remember what the purpose of each phase of your painting is. Once you have that large shape in place, then later on, once things start drying up, you can go in and add your darks as well. But if you worry too much about your darks and your detail in that phase of painting that middle value, then your wet edge is going to dry up, and then you can't really paint a large connected shape. And here is the finished painting. So this is not an easy part of painting. And like I mentioned, you have a lot of things to think about at one time, and that can get really frustrating. But the more that you do this, the easier that it's gonna get. So I hope that this little video was helpful in that way for you. And I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my free video lesson, Eight Tips to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below, or you can get to it in my bio on Instagram. I've gotten some great feedback from this video lesson and it's been very helpful to solve a big problem that I have had to deal with and that is overworking your painting. So take a look at that video lesson if you haven't done that already and I will see you next time.